Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Dylan and Dylan show presented by Tunnel Vision Sports. Happy to be with you on this Friday, July 30th for what should be a surprisingly exciting show that Dylan and I are excited to bring your way. Speaking of Dylan, we've got my co-host Dylan Holt here. Dylan, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Um, This was a week in sports that Coming into it, maybe we didn't expect it to just be this wild week of just things going off anywhere and everywhere. And it really just did. From all corners of the sports world, we got news. Um, It's been a really fun week. Yesterday was a lot of fun with the NBA draft and everything happening with the MLB trade deadline. Um, But before we get to that, I got to get my little tidbits about July 30th and its significance in sports. So in 1930, uh, they played the first ever FIFA World Cup. And FIFA World Cup is always fun, no matter if you're a soccer fan or not. You get to watch these uh, national teams go out and give their all. Uh, it was between Uruguay and Argentina. Uruguay came away with a 4-2 to two victory. Uh, and sticking with uh, soccer, it is also Hope Solo's birthday. She was born today. Uh, gotta love Hope Solo. And also Chris Mullen. He was born on July 30th. So two uh, Team USA legends on different sports, but both legends in their own right, uh, born on July 30th. And that, that's my uh, little July 30th tidbits on this day. Oh, uh, awesome stuff there. Happy birthday to Hope Solo, Chris Mullen. Uh, Got to be excited about that. World Cup fitting in great with the Olympic stuff going on, a lot of stuff going on there as well. A reminder to follow Ton of Vision Sports on Spotify and Apple Podcasts so you guys never miss an episode of anything the TV Sports Network puts out in those feeds. And it's no secret, like Dylan said, we were expecting sort of a midsummer lull for these sports topics as the NBA wound down and we awaited football to start. Uh, but this week was full of headlines, dramas, unexpected twists. So we have a ton to get into today. But first, we're coming out of the box again with our third edition of the Out of the Box Fantasy Draft Topics. And this week with the NBA draft happening, we were in a draft mood. So we decided to make this a bit more interesting. Instead of drafting the best team, we will be competing to draft the worst team in the all-time draft bus fantasy draft. Should be an interesting topic. As a Detroit fan, I'm no stranger to draft bus in my lifetime. So uh, expect uh, um, at least one or two Detroit players on at least one of our lists, I'm assuming. Uh, but I will throw it to Dylan again. Do you want the first pick or do you want the second and third picks this week? Um, I'll go I'll go with pick one. Um, so I when I was breaking down this list, I was like, man, who do I want to go with? There's so many players that uh, that have obviously got that bus title. Um, and I decided to go with the guy that when he came out of college, I was like, this guy is going to be a star. And I remember telling my friends, which Wyatt and Reed, I know you're listening. I remember telling them this guy is going to be the next Tom Brady. And it might be the worst sports take I've ever had. Uh, I remember he played against Texas A&M in a game in college and lit them up. And I was like, that's an SEC school. He's, he's incredible. He, he doesn't play in the SEC. That was the ticket for me. I was like, this is the guy who came out, out in a quarterback loaded draft. I am talking about Josh Rosen, who was selected number 10 overall by the Arizona Cardinals. I was completely sold. I bought a Jersey. Like I was all in on Josh Rosen. Um, obviously has not had a very good career. He's still young. Uh, who knows what could happen, but it's not looking great. Um, he was picked before Lamar Jackson uh, and famously said nine teams are going to regret their decision. Uh, not only was he, he – Lamar was the quarterback that kind of stands out that was picked after him, but he's also picked ahead of guys like Mika Fitzpatrick, Vita Vea, DJ Moore, and Calvin Ridley. So, I mean, there's just tons of talent that the Cardinals passed up on and decided to go with Josh Rosen. Looked like a good pick at the time. But now in the lens of uh, 2021, that is a really, really rough pick. And uh, that's why he is getting selected number one by Team Holt. Still you, still love you, Josh Rosen, but tough look. Yeah, Josh Rosen is definitely an interesting one, it, considering how quickly he flamed out, how quickly his experiment ended. It, it seemed like they were just getting into the Josh Rosen experiment, and then he was being traded to Miami, and it was pretty much destined that he was out of the league. So uh, definitely in the recent guys, one of the guys that sticks out the most, uh, especially at that quarterback position. And you touched on uh, some of the criteria that it takes to be a bust. You've got to be chosen high, thought highly of, but there's also got to be guys around you that were drafted after you and uh, end up doing big things. And that's the thing that really defines a bust. And as a Detroit fan, uh, there's one name that tops that list. And I can't, 
ha- have an all-time bust list and not have this guy as my first overall pick in the 2003 NBA draft, maybe the most deep NBA draft since uh, uh, until last night's draft, uh, if we're being honest, uh, multiple all-stars at the top of that draft. The Pistons had the number two slot. LeBron James goes number one and Darko Milicic goes number two to the Detroit Pistons. Uh, interestingly enough, the Pistons won the title the very next year after that. So it didn't hurt us in that sense. But when you talk about guys like Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh all going after Darko Milicic, uh, a guy who never really had a starting role in the NBA, was out of the league very quickly. And then you talk about those Pistons teams who were very close to winning multiple titles in that stretch. And if you talk about adding a guy like Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, or Chris Bosh, uh, that would have been multiple titles. And I don't think it, it, it could really be argued because that team was very stacked. They made the Eastern conference finals, I think like eight times in a row, uh, only got the one championship though, lost to the Spurs in a, in the 2005 NBA finals. Uh, and when you talk about bus, I mean, and Darko was an all timer, uh, considering he was one of those first foreign guys that really got a lot of draft hub. People were saying he was the next, really the next big thing next to LeBron James, uh, in terms of talent wise and nowhere close. So, uh, I can't leave him off that list. And, uh, so for the second pick, I will take Darko Milicic, uh, no doubt. And with the third pick, I, so yeah, I have two lists going and I wanted to do an, my all-time bus, but I think I'm going to stick with my Detroit only list because Detroit just has so much to pick from. I've got so much history with these teams. I've got so much history with these guys and I'll go with a guy that was very uh, similar, similar time frame. Uh, one of the first quarterbacks I really was a fan of growing up. I'm talking about Joey Harrington uh, quarterback from Oregon was the, a top overall pick. Uh, was supposed to be the future of the Lions franchise, one of the many future quarterbacks of the Lions franchise, uh, was not very good in the Lions uniform, uh, started what would be the collapse of that franchise, ended up uh, turning over the reins to John Kitna, and they went to would go 0-16 uh, not too far after. But Joey Harrington, uh, one of those guys, Heisman hype, one of the, so much hype around him, uh, was loved in Detroit for his first year and quickly took a turn for the worse. Uh, so I will round out my first two picks with two Detroit, Detroit legendary busts and throw it back to you for your uh, second and third picks. Uh, Darko was definitely on my list. Joey wasn't. I, I didn't want to take Darko no more no bra. I didn't feel right doing that to you. I feel like Darko should be that number two guy. It just seems right. Uh, so with my my uh, second pick here, I'm going to go back to football. I'm going to go to the 2007 NFL draft, the number one pick, Jamarcus Russell out of LSU uh, to the Raiders. Uh, Jamarcus Russell was very, very hyped up. I mean, it, he, they – they thought he was the next big thing, and it really looked like he was coming out of LSU. Um, he just was not. Uh, Oakland was not a good fit, uh, and he just really, really struggled. And not even just looking at what he did on the field, but the guys that came after him. This is just a list of guys that got picked in the first round. He got picked over Calvin Johnson, Joe Thomas, Adrian Peterson, Marshawn Lynch, Patrick Willis, Darrell Revis, Dwayne Bowe, Joe Stanley and Greg Olson. All those guys went in the first round after him. And if any of those guys were in a Raider uniform instead of Jamarcus Russell, it would have been so much better for that franchise, which is uh, which is tough because it looked like Jamarcus Russell was going to be really solid, but he wasn't. And there were so many great players that went after him. So that's a tough one for Jamarcus. And I'll, I'll take him in my uh, on my bus team with my second pick. Uh, I'm going to switch gears to basketball now. And there's two guys I really want, and I don't know which one isn't on your list because they're both big names. But I'm going to go with – let's go with Adam Morrison from the 2006 draft. He was picked number three overall. Um, he was a guy coming out of Gonzaga who everybody was like, he's the man, uh, just like any of the other guys that we're going to talk about. Um, he wasn't, shocker, uh, as he went to Charlotte and he just struggled. Uh he was he was picked above guys like Brandon Roy, who obviously his career got cut short, but he was awesome while he was playing. 
uh, got picked before Rudy Gay, JJ Redick, Rajon Rondo, and Kyle Lowry. Uh, that's tough <laughs> for Charlotte, who has been kind of looking for success since the Adam Morrison pick. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Jamarcus Russell and Adam Morrison to go along with Josh Rosen so far, and I'll give it to you for your last two picks. Yeah, the Jamarcus Russell pick brings back big memories. I remember that draft very well, and that was a a quarterback heavy draft with Jamarcus Russell and Brady Quinn really fighting between the the top spots. Neither of guys, those guys ended up being much of anything while a ton of other guys ended up being really, really good. So uh, that's a, a great pick uh, there for sure. And Adam Morrison, for sure. One of those guys that uh, makes that list for sure. Uh, no complaints there. Uh, I wanted to stick with my Detroit stuff, but I will, uh, if I'm going to have Greg Oden there, uh, I think I'm going to have to snatch up Greg Oden for my list for this one. Uh, he fits the criteria. And uh, I did want to say it's tough. I, I try to avoid guys that get injured for bus lists like this. Uh, I saw when I was doing my research, guys like Jay Williams coming up and it's like, it's, it's tough to call them bus because they, they didn't underperform. They just didn't get the chance to really perform. Uh, Greg Oden is a, different uh case and there's two reasons for that uh one his health issues were kind of well known going into his even his college career uh I think it was like his leg was a little long one of his legs was a little longer than the other one and that really contributed to what ended up being his like detrimental knee problems that he had so it wasn't like Portland was out of you know out of the loop on the potential problems Greg Oden uh provided and the second thing is, is you had Kevin Durant at number two. And when you talk about maybe a top 10 player of all time going number two, when you got a guy that barely saw the floor uh, at number one, it, it becomes too hard to overlook. So Greg Oden is one of the all-time draft busts and, and unfortunate because he was so uh, at Ohio state, he was one of the most explosive centers I'd, I'd seen play. And again, it, it's tough when those guys get injured because if he would have played at full strength, he may have been as dominant as we thought he would have been. But when, when Kevin Durant goes after you, it's tough to overlook that. And with my final pick, I will go back to my Detroit theme. Uh, I wanted to go back to football, but I'm going to stick with basketball here um, and a more recent draft pick. And it, it came to mind. It comes to mind ever, ever so often. And, and now even more often as Devin Booker, was a star in the postseason and in the NBA finals uh, in that same draft, the, the Detroit Pistons with the, I believe it was the number seven overall pick decided to take Stanley Johnson out of Arizona. <laughs> and Stanley Johnson is uh, I think in the G league now, but uh, it, it hurts for a couple of reasons. One Stanley Johnson was just such a raw player uh, compared to Devin Booker in terms of what Devin Booker was a pure scorer coming out of college while Stanley Johnson was raw. We were going to need to build him from the ground up and Stan Van Gundy was not the guy that was going to do that. Uh, and then on the other side, Devin Booker is a Pistons fan. He grew, he was born in Grand Rapids. He's a huge fan of the 04 Pistons. And that makes me it just hurts so much more to know that a guy of that caliber who would want to play for my organization uh, slipped by because we took Stanley Johnson. So Stanley Johnson sticks out a little bit more in my mind uh, for recent Detroit guys. So uh, I feel happy with my list. I got Darko, I got Joey Harrington, I got Stanley, and then rounded out with Greg Oden. I I'm pretty confident with my list. We'll throw it to you for the final pick. All right, my final pick, I didn't think he'd be here. I like your picks, but I didn't. I thought maybe you would swipe him up. Um, I'm going to go with a guy that got to play with two all-time greats, but he's still very much an all-time bust. Uh, he got to play with Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. I'm talking about the number one pick from the 2001 draft, Kwame Brown. Got drafted to the Wizards. Uh, selected before Tyson Chandler, who is a former uh, Defensive Player of the Year. Drafted before Pau Gasol, who is a future Hall of Famer. Drafted before Joe Johnson, who was an incredible ISO Joe, incredible player. Drafted before Zebo, who was a great player in Memphis. Uh, drafted before Agent Zero, Gilbert Arenas, who was a great player in Washington, where Kwame Brown played. And drafted before Tony Parker, who had a legendary career in San Antonio and very well could be a Hall of Famer. Um, that's a very tough pick. And <laughs> just Kwame is an all-time bust. And I it sucks to 
uh, see what could have or think about what could have been if Kwame everything works out. But it is what it is. Um, and just seeing the guys that went behind him, they could have been playing with Jordan and Washington at, in the twilight of his career. That's that's something else. But uh, I'm really happy with my team uh, of Josh Rose. Yeah, I think uh, we got a little bit of disconnect from uh, Dylan there. But, yeah, awesome pick there for sure. Kwame Brown spent a little bit of time in Detroit, actually, uh, near the end of his career. Uh, so that would have fit in with my list as well. Um, but Just didn't quite make your list. Oh, sorry. You, you disconnected there for a little bit. But uh, guys that didn't quite make my list uh, – so I, 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 I had laid out a bunch of guys and I wanted to make a Detroit only list and an all time bus list. So guys that were off of my all time bus list, uh, Jamarcus Russell was on my list. Uh, Trent Richardson and Johnny Manziel were guys that if I was going to go that direction, uh, both for the Browns, both high draft picks, Trent Richardson. Also, they, they traded a first round pick in order to get that first round pick. So, uh, basically spent two first round picks on Trent Richardson and didn't work out uh, from the NBA side. I had guys like Hashim the beat uh, also on there, Anthony Bennett uh, for Cleveland uh, and then Johnny Flynn as well. A uh, little bit lower down uh, for the Timberwolves, but it was drafted before Steph Curry. So if you're a point guard drafted before Steph Curry and not in the league anymore, you qualify as a pretty big bust. Um, and there was other Detroit guys I had there as well. Charles Rogers, Roy Williams, Mike Williams, uh, all guys that within my lifetime, I watched the Lions draft and unfortunately bust out before they even really uh, had a chance. But also NFL guys, Tim Couch, Ryan Leaf, uh, uh, pretty obvious names, but I wanted to stay more recent. Uh, any guys that didn't make your list? Yeah, uh, I, guys you said like Manziel, uh, Anthony Bennett. I thought about uh, mentioning guys like Marcus Mariota or Vince Young, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. Uh, I didn't even think about Johnny Flynn, and I should have. John, I was a huge Johnny Flynn guy when he was coming out of Syracuse. I really liked his game, and, man, that did not turn out good. Uh, Brian Bosworth was one that came to mind because the Boz was supposed to be the man coming out of Oklahoma. But, yeah, a lot of the names you said, I mean, the, the names you think about when you think of us, that's what came to mind. But, yeah, I'm happy with the team I walked away with. And hopefully this week we can uh, get, a, get a winner on the social medias. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, stick out for or look out for our social media posts. Uh, like Dylan said last week, our Olympian fantasy draft tied and then our tiebreaker uh, vote tied again. So we're going to have to figure out a way to uh, decide that one. But we will also post today's stuff as well so you guys can weigh in. Uh, maybe let us know of some busts that we forgot or left off our list that you would like to see. And then let us know who you think drafted the worst team of all time. Uh, so we will move on sticking with draft topics and a crazy NBA draft last night. Uh, we were covering it live on uh, Instagram last night, but it was a chaotic uh, one of the most chaotic draft nights in recent memory. Uh, it started early, uh, Hours before the draft, as Woj, Woj bombs started dropping and seemingly the first four picks were leaked, then Toronto shocked everyone by taking Scotty Barnes instead of Jalen Suggs. And then the Lakers may have stolen the headlines of the whole night by trading for Russell Westbrook, sending Kuzma and uh, Montrez Harrell to the Wizards. Uh, crazy stuff going on throughout the night. A lot of uh, reaches for guys, the guys we didn't expect to be taken as high as they were, but uh, just an awesome night of NBA draft stuff. Uh, Dylan, just give me your overall takeaways from draft night. Uh, draft, draft day uh, is always one of my favorite days, whether it be the NFL draft or NBA draft. It's just so much fun. The future of the league is kind of just like on everybody's mind, which is a lot of fun. And I love when someone gets picked, whether it's Cade Cunningham at number one, or Cam Thomas at 27 to the Nets. They, they show the highlights, and you're like, this guy's going to be a future star. You get sold, and it's awesome, which obviously not all 60 guys picked last night are going to be a future star. But it, it's a lot of fun. These guys get to have their moment. And then you get to see these big trades that happen every so often in the draft, whether it be a couple years ago, Jimmy Butler getting traded from the Bulls to the T-Wolves. Last night, Russ getting sent to the Lakers to form a super team with LeBron and AD, which is a ton of fun. Um, I think uh, what I really liked are the picks I really liked. Um, I really like Cade to Detroit, obviously. that's That was a slam dunk. I think 
a lot of people expected that. Um, and then the, I, I got to keep echoing on Cam Thomas. That That is a pick I just love. Uh, he's a guy out of LSU that was – that I thought was undervalued coming into this draft. Um, and then – looking at a guy like Ayo uh, out of Illinois that went to the Bulls in the second round. Uh, he he had a chance to go back to school and get a little more experience in his belt, but he decided to go to the draft out of the second round. He gets to go to his hometown Chicago Bulls, which I thought was really cool. The My Memphis Grizzlies kind of surprised me. They traded up earlier in the week, got the number 10 pick, and a lot of people expected maybe Josh Giddy, but he went a little bit higher than people expected. People thought James Booknight. Uh, I really wanted him to see uh, – see and go with Moses Moody, but they kind of shocked everybody and went with Zaire Williams out of Stanford. And the more you think about it, the more it makes sense. Uh, it's an athletic wing to put next to John, Jaron Jackson Jr. Uh, and it could be a lot of fun to watch. The The Grizzlies front office has earned a lot of good grace with that with the Grizzlies fan base. And I just kind of got to wait and see what happens. And then I, uh, the last thing I wanted to mention, I really love seeing uh, two Tennessee Vols taken in the first round. For the first time since Bernie and Ernie back in the day, Keon Johnson to the Clippers and then Jaden Springer to the 76ers was a lot of fun. And also, I said one more thing, but one more thing after the one more thing. Uh, I absolutely love Sharif Cooper to Atlanta. Um, he was picked late in the second round, but he he very, very limited playing time in Auburn with all the stuff going down on down there with him. Uh, but he looked really good when he played. And I think Atlanta might have just got a really nice guard to go along with Trey Young and everything else that's going down there. Uh, so, yeah, I really enjoyed the draft. It's always a ton of fun and a lot of thoughts going on and what's going to happen, even in the next few weeks as we get into free agency and all the Woj bombs that are coming soon. Yeah, uh, all of that, all of that, I echo all of what you said there, the Sharif Cooper stuff, the – down to all of it, I echo all of it. I do want to start by clearing the air on something I said last night. Uh, maybe a stretch of a comparison that I made, and I just want to uh, just clear the air and just say I did not. I do not think Scotty Barnes is the next Giannis Antetokounmpo. What I meant by that, and people rightfully called me out on that because I didn't uh, vocalize it so eloquently. Uh, what I believe is what's happening with Scotty Barnes is that he is going to be run at the point guard, similarly to what happened with Giannis at the beginning of his career, when they realized how talented Giannis was as a ball handler uh, and at running the offense, they decided, uh, I think it was Jason Kidd, who was the coach there at the time, decided, you know what, we're just going to run Giannis as our point guard. We don't really have any other point guards on our roster, and the kid's good enough, we'll, we'll do it. And I think that's the the – thought process behind taking Scotty Barnes at four. Uh, if you're going to take a point guard, why not take one of these guys that seems to be the future of the NBA, a, a, a big, tall point forward that can move the ball and do a lot of things athletically uh, that other point guards can't do. So uh, I think it makes sense in that regard. I just want to say, I don't think he's going to be nearly as good as Giannis is. So we don't have to uh, get that, uh, get that wrong but I do think he's a he's a, a better comparison is something like Draymond Green mixed with Scotty Pippen he's a he's a tough defender he can guard multiple spots on the floor and he can facilitate and score himself so I think he's going to be a good fit even though that was a a bit of a shock for fans in Toronto not getting Suggs and ended up with uh, Barnes but I think he's got a very high ceiling so I'm really uh I'm very excited for that you got something that something just happened Yep. Uh, the White Sox are finalizing a deal to acquire Craig Kimbrell from the Cubs. Wow. Wow. I have never, I don't think I've ever heard of a White Sox Cubs trade. I don't think I've ever heard, like, seen one of those go down. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but it seems like it's happening. That's according to ESPN. Wow huge bomb there that's a, a Passan bomb i'm assuming so we will we'll get very into much the, so <laughs> we will get into the mlb trade deadline stuff there but thank you for jumping in with that that's awesome uh we'll get uh, refocusing here as a pistons fan i was really excited with the the kate cunningham stuff obviously uh overall but i was really overall happy with the entire draft that the pistons had they got jt thor from auburn isaiah livers from michigan luca garza from iowa and bolsa copper for copper kiva from uh florida state and all of those guys i see as potential pros like they all have like a route to the nba they all have their way that they could 
seemingly get into a rotation. And if you're getting all of that four guys in the NBA uh, in the second round, that I thought that was a home run from the Pistons and uh, GM Troy Weaver. I thought they did an amazing job. And then finally, we mentioned it, the, the Lakers making that huge trade for Westbrook. Uh, and we, we started to touch on it last night, but it's, it's tough to even see what the Lakers are going to be. It's tough to see how they even mesh. They only have five players on their roster right now. They have five players on their roster right now. Like if they had to play a game today, Alfonso McKinney would have to play 48 minutes because they have five players on their roster. So it's, uh, it's, it's impossible for us to say, Oh, how is Russ going to fit with LeBron and AD when we don't even know like what the other pieces are going to be. So, uh, and they're going to have to do, a lot with a very little amount of cap room but with Westbrook AD and LeBron's salaries. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how that Lakers uh, roster plays out. But uh, like you said, uh, uh, the NBA draft is so much fun because you just, every pick makes sense in your mind when it happens. You, you can talk, you can talk yourself into every pick as it's going on and you're like, okay, that actually makes sense. I can see that guy uh, working out. And then in a few years, we'll, we'll look back on it and be like, oh, my God, I can't believe that guy went before that guy and that guy. And that's the fun of the draft. It's, it, it's just so, so much opportunity in front of us uh, and so much opportunity in front of those guys. So it's interesting to see how everything plays out down the road. We will move forward from the NBA to the NFL now as we move on with our preseason power rankings. Numbers 24 through 21 are on the docket today. We're getting closer to the teams with a chance to compete for something, but teams uh, today are more middle of the pack, maybe right below the middle of the pack. So we'll start with Dylan, who you got at 24 for us starting off this week. At 24, I've got out of the NFC North, and I believe this is my first NFC North team, uh, I've got the Bears. Uh, I I like the Bears. I just I don't think they're going to be starting Justin Fields off the bat, and I think they should be. But they're they're bringing in a young quarterback like Fields, who looks like he's going to have a ton of talent. Um, and they're they're coming off a year where they did make the playoffs. They they fell to the Saints. Um, but I I don't know. I just feel like with that division, I don't. I think the not as good as the other teams, uh, pretty blatantly. Uh, they just lost Anthony Miller, who's one of their top receivers. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't see a lot of good things coming in Chicago. I see this more as a transition here as they're getting fields uh, ready to take over for the future. And what looks like it could be a really bright future in Chicago. Uh, I hope so. Anyways, I, I really like watching Justin Fields. But, yeah, this year probably not it for Chicago, and that's fine. They can they can struggle a little bit and then hopefully get some help for Justin and the, the rest of the Bears in the draft next year. Uh, who do you have at 24? I'm still muted. Uh, I like that pick Chicago coming very quickly on my list as well, but I have 24. I've got the Denver Broncos. Uh, they seem to be prepping for to be that landing spot for Aaron Rodgers, And now that it's official there and it's coming back to green Bay, uh, I think it's a fitting now that we slot Denver into that 24 spot because that quarterback room now is very shaky. Uh, you, is it, is it Drew Locke or is it Teddy Bridgewater? And I don't think really anyone knows. And I don't think Denver fans are really going to be thrilled with either option once it, once it's all said and done. Um, and I don't really think they're as close as some people might think. I, I like their young players, but they're, they're young, you know, they're going to be, a few years away from competing. And when you don't have a set quarterback on top of that, it's really tough to find your identity uh, as a young team like that. So i am got Denver at 24. We'll move on to 23. Who do you have at 23 for us? Uh, lucky number 23. I'm going with the New York football giants. Um, I believe you had the giants last week uh, in last week's rankings. I, I like the giants a little bit more than you. Uh, I think this Trey, when we interviewed Trey a few weeks ago, he convinced me Daniel Jones, he's just going to get better and better. And I hope he does. Uh, Saquon's going to be back. They added Kenny Galladay. You got Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram, uh, and all the other offensive pieces. So, I mean, if Daniel Jones can even have kind of an average season and a week in FC East, they could, they could be better than 23. Uh, I like what they have on their defense, especially with like James Bradbury. He's a, an amazing corner, very, very good player. Um, I think kind of with these NFC East teams, uh, as they come in, it's kind of a toss-up. The Eagles are the only one that I'm really out on. I don't think the Eagles have much of a shot in NFC East, which 
they could prove me wrong too. That's fine. But uh, the Giants, I mean, if Daniel Jones puts it together and Saquon's healthy, that that team could be scary because they can play some defense. And they've got those weapons on the outside, like I said. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go with New York. And they could make me look dumb, but that's fine. Make me look dumb and let's have some fun. Uh, who do you have at 23? Yeah, uh, yeah, Saquon coming back definitely makes New York uh, way more interesting than I think a lot of people do think. Uh, at 23, I will echo your 24th pick. I'm going with the Bears, the Chicago Bears. Uh, they made the big splash of the draft by moving up to get fields, but with Rodgers being back with the pack, that means the NFC North should be pretty similar to what it was last year, and that means the Bears are probably the third best team in that division. Uh, I think Andy Dalton's probably going to start for them, and you know that's solid. But I think they're going to struggle to a degree. Uh, I think you know Minnesota is probably better than them. Green Bay is definitely better than them, so you can probably count on four losses there. Uh, Chicago doesn't seem to really handle the Lions very well either. So even the, even though I think the Lions are the worst team, I can still see Chicago dropping a game to the Lions. And if you drop five games in your division, I don't see much much of a chance of you doing much of anything. So uh, bright future in Chicago, though. I love the Justin Fields pick. I think they're gonna they're gonna be moving up very soon, but uh, probably not this year in terms of what they can do in the NFC North. We'll move on to twenty two. Who you got at the twenty second spot? I'm going to echo you at 22. 22, I'm going with the boys from the Mile High City, the Denver Broncos. Uh, I like the Broncos roster, except for one position, and it's the position that's the most important, unfortunately, for the Broncos, and that's the quarterback position. I was high on Drew Locke coming out of the draft, and it turns out Dylan Holt being high on you as a quarterback coming out of the draft is not a good thing because Josh Rosen and Drew Locke, I was both high on both of them. Not not a great look. Maybe you just shouldn't wear number three. That that might be the combining thing. I don't know. Um, but Drew Locke hasn't hasn't been great. Uh, he's had flashes. Maybe he can make those flashes into consistency. If he can, the Broncos are going to be a lot better than twenty second because uh, they've got weapons everywhere. Uh, that wide receiver room is crazy. It looks like in University of Alabama receiving room. Something they would put out there. Um, and then the guy like Noah Fan tight end. And then they're always going to be good at defense. I'm convinced they'll be good at defense until the end of time. That's just what they do. And I mean, like last year, they weren't they weren't that good, but they play to win, which is admirable. They're one of those franchises that isn't going to go out there and tank. So whatever happens, whether they make a trade for someone, they're, I don't think they're going to get Rodgers, obviously. And we'll talk about that more later. But um, they're going to compete. They're going to give guys, uh, give other teams tough games, and they're they're probably going to win a couple more games than a lot of people expect because that's just what the Broncos do, and they make make other people's life uh, tough. And I've got to see that quite a bit with the Titans playing them a lot of times in the last few seasons. But yeah, uh, Denver at twenty two. Who do you have at lucky number two two? Yeah, and uh, Denver is interesting. You know, they they lost out on the Aaron Rodgers sweepstakes this this year, but. Uh, might be the last time we see Rodgers in uh, Green Bay, and he they could definitely be the best landing spot come next offseason. So uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, at 22, I've got someone you had in your last group of four last week. I've got the Las Vegas Raiders here at 22. Uh, lower than a lot of people do uh, have them, and for the same reasons that you said. Uh, people have tried to sell me on this Raiders team for a while, I feel like, I, and I've kind of bought into it every year. It's like, okay, I kind of do like Derek Carr. I do think Josh Jacobs is a good running back. And this is the first time I'm going to just say, I'm going to put my foot down. It's like, no, Derek Carr is not a good quarterback. Uh, Jacobs is a solid fantasy running back, but he is not good enough uh, to compete in a really, really good NFC West. That <laughs> So uh, I think, uh, I think the ship has sailed on them. I think they're on the way down. Uh, I think Gruden's on probably on his way out there. So uh, Vegas at 22 does not uh, sits pretty well with me in terms of where they, where they're at with their organization. I'm out on the Derek Carr train. I'm out on all of that stuff. So uh, we will move on to the final team this week at 21. Who do you got at 21? Strong agree with the Raiders. And the Raiders fan base probably hates us now, but that's okay. If they're good this year, you can tell us all about it. Uh, tell us all about it. Um, at 21, I have a team that I think is going to surprise me. And it scared me when I put them there, but I think it's right for right now. Uh, I'm going with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, it, this is a team I, – I love the roster – uh, I love the coaching staff. I think Matt Rule does a great job. 
Um, and I think they're good. I think they very well could be good. And they might be the second best team in their division, but we'll wait and see. Um, I really like the pickup of Sam Darnold because I am a firm believer of getting away from Adam Gase and let's see what happens because Ryan Tannehill got away from Adam Gase and now he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And Sam Darnold is oozing with potential, so you never know. Plus, he's getting to go in there. He's back with Robbie Anderson, who he played with in New York, and he had success with Robbie Anderson in New York. And he gets also thrown to a guy like DJ Moore. Oh, and he's got Christian McCaffrey in the backfield. I mean, that's a lot of firepower on that offense. And they just spent like 12 draft picks on defense in this year's draft. So, I mean, they've got – and they already had a pretty good defense. So, I mean, they're just stacking up on the defense. They've got weapons on the offense. That division that they're in only got worse. I mean, the Buccaneers are still the Buccaneers, but the, the Saints and Falcons got worse. They didn't get better. So the, the Panthers could surprise people. I think I really like them. I, I like what they're doing. Uh, and I really hope they make me look stupid because I think they could be a lot of fun to watch if everything works out. But, yeah, Sam Darnold and the Carolina Panthers coming at 21. Who do you have at 21? Yeah, uh, just before I move on to my 21st pick, Darnold, and I say this – I'll say this with most quarterbacks uh, that are taken like with that much potential that high up, you kind of give, you almost got to give them three chances with three different coaching staffs. Uh, and if that means, you know, two different coaching staffs in their first run and then, a, and then he moves on to another one, you got to at least give them the opportunity to work with a different coaching staff and see if they can find a, a, a groove because being a Detroit fan, I know how bad coaching staffs can be and how bad they can tank a, a player's potential and their talent. So uh, you got to give them at least another chance, especially a guy like Darnold, who's got all that talent. Um, at 21, I think I've got probably a shocker for most people. I don't think many people have them this low, but I'm going with the New Orleans Saints at 21. Stacked offensively, should be stacked offensively, but – Man, you're going from Drew Brees to either Jameis Winston or Taysom Hill. I mean, that is one of the biggest drops in talents I think we're ever going to see from one season to the next. And I don't think the Saints are ready for that. I don't think the Saints the Saints haven't had a hall of, a non Hall of Fame quarterback running their show since Drew Brees got there. So what do you what? It's going to be really hard for that team to readjust from having a guy like Drew Brees, a veteran leader who can do basically anything with the football, to a guy like Jameis Winston who's going to need a lot of help to, and a lot of things to to go his way. So um, Saints maybe a little bit lower than a lot of people would expect, but I think they're going to kind of drop off this year without Drew Brees. I think another maybe Passan bomb just came through. Uh, we found out what they gave up for Krim- Kimbrel. They give up second baseman Nick Madrigal and re- reliever Cody Hewer. So that's a, that's a decent little haul for the Cubs. Uh, Mad- Madrigal is a, a nice young player and uh, Hewer out of the bullpen. Uh, as a decent little give up for the White Sox to get an elite guy like Kimbrell. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Madrigal has been uh, hurt for a lot of this year, but uh, has been a solid piece for that White Sox team who's – uh, trying to compete. I mean, they're going to win the AL Central pretty easily, so we're going to see how they do in the postseason now. Um, but yeah, interesting stuff there. Uh, we will that will wrap up our power rankings for this week. So I had Denver, Chicago, uh, Las Vegas, and New Orleans, twenty four through twenty one. Dylan, what just list off what you had? Real. My recap of twenty four through twenty one. I had twenty four the Bears, twenty three the New York Football Giants. 22, the Broncos of the Mile High City, Denver, and 21, Sam Darnold and those Carolina Panthers. All right, so check out social media, Dylan Dylan at Dylan Dylan Show on Instagram and Twitter. You'll see graphics and uh, posts regarding those power rankings, and we will get you 20 through 17 next week uh, on next week's show. That'll do it for the main topics. We will move on to this week in sports and should be a jam pack this week in sports with all the news that we have this week. Uh, we will start with what we've been alluding to in the NFL as Aaron Rodgers versus the Packers. The dispute has finally been resolved for the time being Rodgers reported to training camp this week, uh, but did not hold back as he explained the rift between him and the organization at length during his first media availability. Among the things he said, 
was that were bothering him was his lack of involvement uh, with free agency decisions and recruiting of players while the organization also in his mind disrespected veteran players on their way out of the door guys like Charles Woodson Clay Matthews TJ Lang were some of the guys that Rogers mentioned uh, and it seems like even though Rogers is back this may be the last dance for Rogers in Green Bay Dylan give me your thoughts on uh, how this saga has transpired well, it seems like a week ago, everyone was convinced Aaron Rodgers was going to get traded before maybe even preseason. Uh, and then Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams went on Instagram one night at like two in the morning, and they both po- both both posted the picture of Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen kind of dapping each other up and kind of alluding to one last dance between those two in Green Bay, which is exciting uh, as a non-Packer fan and don't really have to deal with the Packers. Uh, it, it's going to be cool to see them just really go at it for one more year. Uh, and it was really cool to see Aaron Rodgers going to Green Bay and just really have no cares in the world. He's like, I'm Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to do what I want to do. This is about me, uh, which I he kind of – he's earned it. He's the reigning MVP. Um, he was upset, like you said, about some personnel decisions the Packers have made, which, fair enough, it, it's very well known how the Packers have handled things. They went and drafted a quarterback and a wide receiver heavy draft. They got Jordan Love instead of going with maybe a receiver, uh, which was frustrating for everyone. I can only imagine how frustrated Aaron Rodgers was. Um, Yeah, I I think it's really exciting to see. uh, And we'll kind of get to just watch him live out this last dance that kind of everybody's like put up in their heads and seeing the Michael Jordan documentary. And uh, I think it's, you know, he might go back to back MVP if he's that motivated and he might just do it out of spite. Who knows? Uh, Aaron Rodgers seems like he might be that kind of person. But, uh, yeah, I feel bad for NFC North teams like your Lions that are going to have to deal with it. That'll be that'll be very interesting. But, yeah, uh, what were your thoughts seeing the whole Rodgers saga play out just this week or throughout this offseason? Yeah, at least as a Lions fan, we know we're going to be bad this year, so it's not uh, we can kind of get out of Rodgers' array. Uh, with the Packers, you know, they're, they're kind of our – big brother rivals we don't like the Packers but we know how good they are we know how good they've been but it doesn't pain me to see them have these organizational struggles like they've had um that being said the NFC North is pretty wide open for the Packers to just dominate this year so I think it kind of sets up for like a grand storyline of this last dance I I think they're going to win the division with relative ease uh and if Rodgers and Devontae Adams can get it going and you know, you know, they're going into it knowing this is the last time we're going to play together. This is the last time we're going to do it in Green Bay. Let's leave it all on the field. I think it could be a really awesome storyline for Green Bay to go on and and win, a, a, possibly win a Super Bowl, at least uh, go on and win a division, make some noise in the playoffs um, through all of this adversity that they've uh, seemingly been put into themselves. Uh, but yeah, as a Lions fan, it's it doesn't hurt to see that the, you know, the Packers have been that organization that have done seemingly done things right. You know, the media always used to give them credit for how they've drafted talent, how much homegrown talent that they've uh, developed there. Uh, And now we're seeing the other side of it. When those guys get older, uh, the Packers haven't done really good things. Uh, It started with Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, and it's gone down the line with guys like Aaron Rodgers said, Charles Woodson, Clay Matthews. These were, key pivotal parts to the Packers organization that just kind of got let go without uh, really much of a chance to come back. So uh, it's interesting to see that this is all coming to a head and that it had to be the starting quarterback of your team to point it out to, to the roster and the, and the organization that, Hey, this isn't really shouldn't how shouldn't be how you're treating veteran players. But um, I think it sets up for an awesome storyline this year of Rogers and Devonte Adams and that Packers team just, trying to win it all just in that last one last hurrah. Um, it's setting up for a 30 for 30 down the road. I think <laughs> that's, that was my take when I saw the last dance stuff coming up. I think it's like, Oh, this is, this is taking on a life of its own. It's taking on its own storyline. Um, and I think it's going to be interesting to watch the Packers this year for a variety of reasons. I know Steven maybe not be too happy about that. Our boss, Steven Hayes might not be too happy about that, but uh if they win something, it'll all be worth it, I guess. Uh, we will move on finally uh, to the MLB trade deadline. When we were planning the show this week, we were unsure if the deadline was going to give us enough to talk about this week, but boy, did it ever. Uh, the Dodgers made be- maybe the biggest trade deadline move in recent memory by grabbing Max Scherzer and Trey Turner. 
uh, from the Nationals, basically out of the grasp of the Padres. Uh, the Cubs have already dealt Anthony Rizzo. Uh, now have dealt Greg, Craig, Craig Kimbrell to the White Sox, uh, are seemingly going to deal Chris Bryant as well. The Red Sox snatched up Kyle Schwarber. The Yankees got Joey Gallo. And the Brewers got Eduardo Escobar. So all-stars all around the league moving around, and it seemingly isn't done yet. So, Dylan, what have been your thoughts on a wild trade deadline? Um, I hate to toot my own horn, but I I did kind of see the Anthony Rizzo thing happening. He's 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 heading out of Chicago. He, absolutely hate to see it as a Cardinals fan. I it breaks my heart to see him leaving the the blue and white pinstripes to go put on the those other blue and white pinstripes. Um, I I hope he has a great career in New York and he stays there for the rest of his time. Doesn't have to worry about a, a, a coming home tour in Chicago. Um, but I'm curious to see what happens with the other two of the big three Chicago Cubs players. Uh, Kimbrell's been moved, but he wasn't part of that uh, real core that everybody's been talking about. Uh, Bryant's been rumored heavy to the New York Mets, which I said last week, and I really want to see. I, Rizzo and uh, uh, Bryant both in New York on the different teams would be cool. And if they stayed, uh, seeing them in the Subway Series would be really neat. Um, and then whatever happens with Javi Baez, there's no telling. There hasn't even – there hasn't been a ton of rumors with Javi, so he might not get moved. He might be staying in Chicago, which if they choose Javi as the guy, fair enough. He's awesome, especially with the week he's had. Um, and then Joey Gallo getting moved to New York. I, I didn't see New York being buyers like this, which, I mean, the Yankees are always buyers, but um, I did not see it coming, and they went and got two of the biggest bats on the market. So I guess the Yankees are just going to keep hitting a million home runs and losing to a million and one home runs, but that's okay. Um, they'll, hopefully they'll figure it out at some point. Um, the Scherzer and Trey Turner deal came out of nowhere. I was kind of hoping that Scherzer would go under the radar and the Cardinals would be able to bring him back to Missouri. That very much did not happen. Those California teams were fighting over him. Apparently San Francisco, San Diego, and LA were all like, we want Scherzer. And the Dodgers were like, you know what? We've got the big bucks. We've got all these big prospects in our farm system. We want Trey Turner too. And they got it done. So that was uh, just the fact that it happened during the NBA draft after the Russell Westbrook trade happened. And the Dodgers were like, all right, one LA team already made a big trade with the Washington team. Let it hold my beer. I'm going to go make a bigger trade with the, with a Washington team. That was, that was really cool to see. And then just everything else that's happened. Eduardo Escobar, welcome to the NL Central. It looks like you're going to win the title this year. Next year, hold your, hold your horses. The Cardinals are coming. And I, the thing I'm looking for, um, the next big trade, we've got a couple more hours before the deadline. I really want to see Trevor Story moved. I, I think he deserves to be on a team that's at least trying to win because Colorado is a mess. Um, I, in a perfect world, he gets the team back up with Nolan Arenado in St. Louis. I don't know that that's going to happen because the Cardinals like to be pretty frugal at the deadline. That's how history's proven. But uh, I'd like to see Trevor Story get somewhere and try to compete. And uh, Him and Chris Bryant in a perfect world are moved before the deadline in my eyes. But I don't always get my perfect world view, so I don't know. Uh, the deadline's been a lot of fun. It's kind of, it's kind of reminded me of like the NBA Tra trade stuff, which hasn't been always the case in MLB, but uh, it's been a lot of fun, and I'm excited to see what happens the rest of the way, and who knows, we might have a league, another league tr uh, changing trade before it's all said and done. Uh, what have been your thoughts so far with all these big trades around the league? Yeah, I, I echo a lot of what you said. We were obviously live last night on Instagram during the NBA draft, and I remember coming out and actually getting the news that Trey Turner and Max Scherzer were on their way to LA. And I really couldn't believe it. I didn't, like we said before the show, I didn't even know Trey Turner was on the market for anyone. But I think when the Dodgers end up offering their top two prospects in their minor leagues, I think basically anyone becomes available at that point. Um, uh, it, it's been awesome to see all of these teams that have just basically said there's certain teams that are saying, you know, we're going to sell our core because we're not competitive and we need to rebuild. And there's an, uh, some other teams that are going, no, we need some big time bats. Uh, I'll toot my own horn as well. I, I did call the Joey Gallo to New York trade. I did not see them going and getting Rizzo as well, uh, adding two really powerful left-handed bats and that could really help them. That's a right there weirdly right-handed dominant for a ballpark 
that favors left-handers as much as it does. So uh, that those two could really swing things in that uh, AL East. I think things are way more up in the air than it seems. The Red Sox are kind of uh, going downhill a little bit. The Rays surging a bit, but not too much. Uh, uh, so that it's really up in the air to see what the Yankees do. And all of the moves make the teams more competitive. Eduardo Escobar to the Brewers makes them more World Series competitive. Schwarber to the Red Sox is going to be a fun thing to watch. I think, um, like we said, Kimbrell to the White Sox for a team that's trying to compete for a World Series, give them that closer out of the out of the pen, uh, and it makes them really special. So um, I'm, yeah surprised at how much movement there's been and it doesn't seem like it's done yet uh, just been awesome to watch uh, the MLB is uh, I, I don't remember a season like this where the MLB has dominated headlines as much as it has you know it, it's it's seemingly every other week that we're actually getting big baseball news that's dominating the sports headlines and dominating stuff like this we can't not talk about the, uh, the MLB right now so it's awesome to see yeah, and uh, Ken Rosenthal uh, decided to talk about the Cubs just now. The Cubs that I did not expect to be uh, connected to the Mets, Javi Baez. The Mets are reportedly in discussions with the Cubs about Javi Baez. Uh, so, wow, uh, they could add another great shortstop. I don't, I don't really know what their idea is there, having Lindor, but uh, that that would be a splash to say the least. Javi Baez, maybe to the Mets. That would be insane to see Javi Baez and Francisco Lindor. I, I would assume if they're going to do that, they're going to put one of them at second base. And can you imagine a middle infield consisting of Francisco Lindor of Javi Baez? That <laughs> it would be something special to see in New York. That would be awesome to see. All right, that's awesome stuff. That's going to do it from us here at the Dylan and Dylan Show this week. Dylan, you got any final thoughts before we get going? Um, Not really. I uh, I'm hoping – as we get to the final hours of this trade deadline, I'm hoping Chris Bryant is a Met, like I said, and I'm hoping Trevor Story gets to get reunited with Nolan Arenado in St. Louis and the Cardinals never lose again, which is very feasible, I think, if we get Trevor Story and Nolan Arenado in the same infield. Because as we know, that's a clear winning formula. It worked very well for the Rockies. It was great. Um, many division titles in Colorado with Arenado and Story. Um, but I'm just excited to see what happens. Uh, free agency starts soon in the NBA. A lot, a lot of exciting stuff as uh, baseball is really the only sport going, but we've got the Olympics and so on and lots of lots of fun off-season stuff going on everywhere. But, yeah, another fun week. Excited for the week coming up and everything else. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening in. A reminder where you can find us. You can find our social media on Twitter and Instagram at Dylan Dylan Show. And we are now on YouTube at the Dylan and Dylan Show there. You can subscribe to us there. You'll get the full video podcast uh, very soon after it goes live on Spotify and iTunes. You can find Tunnel Vision Sports at Instagram and Twitter at underscore TV sports, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn at Tunnel Vision Sports and on the web at tvsportsmag.com. This has been the Dylan and Dylan Show. Thank you again, everyone, for listening. We will see you all next week.